Hey guys, so today we're going to be doing a video on caloric testing and I'm going to describe to you what caloric testing is and the physiology behind it. So caloric testing is when a physician pours either cold or warm water into a patient's ear and they're looking for eye movement. And what the eye movement tells them is if the medulla is damaged or not, because that is where our vestibular nuclei are located. For the most part, there is one superior vestibular nucleus in the pons, but for the most part, they're in the medulla. Okay, so how does this, how do you get cold water in your ear and then eye movement? Isn't that a little strange? Well, let's talk about the vestibular system before we get into that. So this test is based on the horizontal vestibular system working. So the horizontal vestibular system essentially senses rotation of the head. So looking left, looking right is sensed by this horizontal system. And it is horizontal with the head. So that's important to notice because our patient in this case is lying down. So that's how we can activate it with cold and warm water. But we'll get to that in a second. So remember the patient is lying down and the horizontal vestibular system is horizontal with the head, not with the environment. So inside of these uh, tubes, we have little hair cells, okay? And these hair cells are arranged in such a way that the endolymph can either activate them or inactivate them. So the endolymph is the fluid inside of our tubes and depending on which way the fluid moves, it's going to either send a signal or um, not send a signal. So if the endolymph moves in a direction towards our kinocilium, it's going to bend our hair cells this way and the potassium channels in these hair cells are going to open and you're gonna get depolarization and activation of the system. But if the endolymph moves in the opposite direction, we're gonna get closing down of our potassium channels and no signal is going to be sent, okay? So directionality is very important. So let's do an example of a person looking, a person's head turning to the left, okay? So let's say you're focusing on a target in front of you and your head turns to the left. So we're gonna put a quick diagram here. So let's say uh, this is our person and this is their nose. I know this is a bad diagram. And these two guys are our horizontal vestibular systems. Okay, this guy is our right, and this guy is our left. And your head moves to the left. So what does that do to our endolymph? Well, our endolymph is going, it likes to have inertia, right? So it's going to like to remain in the same place. So in order for our head to move left, our endolymph is actually going to move in the opposite direction. So it's going to move clockwise because it's gonna stay in the same spot. Your head movement is too quick for it. So it's actually gonna produce movement in the opposite direction. And our hair cells are oriented differently depending on our right and left systems. Okay, so an easy diagram that I used to remember this uh, is to draw an ascending hair cell kind of structure uh, as you move posteriorly on this diagram. So the hair cells are moving, are growing as you move posteriorly, okay? So what does that mean for our system? So our endolymph is moving this way for our left side, so that means it is going to be activated, and our endolymph is pushing down against the hair cells this on the right side, so that means it's going to be inactivated. So our left vestibular system is activated. Okay, so here is our left vestibular uh, nucleus drawn here in red and our left vestibular system is activated, sends signals to the left vestibular nucleus. Now that's going to activate movement of our eyes towards the right, as you see in this person right here. So our left vestibular system crosses over and goes to the contralateral para pontine paramedian reticular formation, or PPRF. This guy is responsible for eyes moving horizontally in a specific direction. So in the case of our right PPRF, it's going to move our eyes to the right. Okay, so remember this signal crosses. The right PPRF activates the right abducens nucleus, so that's cranial nerve six, if you remember that, and it's gonna activate uh, abduction of the right eye. So your right eye is going to look right, and it also is gonna cross back over and ascend using the MLF, or the medial longitudinal fasciculus, to our ocular motor nucleus in the diencephalon, so that's cranial nerve three, and this is six right here. And C, cranial nerve three is gonna activate the medial rectus of our left eye, okay? So our eyes are going to move to the right because our left vestibular system was activated. This might be a little confusing, so remember to go through this diagram a couple times to make sure you understand it. All right, so how does this work with water? 
So water is going to uh, be a substitute essentially for turning our head. So what cold and warm water do in our ear is they are going to activate or inactivate our vestibular system. Let's do the cold water example first because it's a little more complicated. So let's zoom in. So let's say the physician pours cold water into this person's left ear. Okay. So remember um, how our hair cells are arranged. So this guy drew the diagram a little differently than me, but the uh, same principle still applies if you draw it my way. So you, put, you uh, put cold water into the left ear and you're going to essentially inactivate the hair cells on the left side. Remember the orientations are different for the left and right. Because cold water sinks, right? So warm water is going to rise just like cold air and warm air. Cold water sinks, warm water rises, okay? So cold water is going to sink and inactivate our left vestibular system. What that does is the brain sees that our left vestibular system is no longer active so it's going to interpret a positive signal from our right vestibular system because a brain is the brain is always comparing left and right and seeing which is more active and that's the signal it's going to take okay so our right our right system is relatively more active than our left so we're going to get a right vestibular system activation and remember when your opposite vestibular system is activated your eyes move to the opposite side okay so our right uh, vestibular system is going to move our eyes to the left. So this person is going to look left when cold water is poured into their left ear. So cold water moves the eyes to the same side. Now, warm water is a little easier because it's just going to activate our vestibular system. So warm water in the left ear activates the vestibular system in the left ear. There's a positive signal from the left and now you're going to get your eyes moving to the right. All right, so a lot of uh, schools teach this di anagram, I guess, cows, so cold, opposite, warm, same. And this is actually wrong for the initial eye movement. So with cold water, we're going to get, so it should be CSWO, actually, so cold, same, warm, opposite. What this acronym refers to is the nystagmus that occurs in patients when this test is done. So when this guy gets uh, warm water poured into his, his left ear, his eyes are going to move right, but eventually they are going to snap back to center. So they're going to snap back left. So that's why cold warm is same. So the nystagmus goes back to the same side, which is the corrective eye movement for when eyes uh, move out of center. So the nystagmus is a correction from eye, your eyes moving out of center. It essentially brings them back to center. So just remember that cows is actually wrong for the caloric testing. You are looking for cold, same, warm, opposite. So I'm going to leave this diagram here for you. I'm just going to take out the little markings I've made on it. And you can review it. Review it on your own time, and hopefully it'll help you understand this concept. So here's the first part. Here's the second part. And here's the third part. Feel free to copy and paste it and review it in your own notes. All right, thanks a bunch, and I'll see you in the next video. Hopefully this helped. Oh, and if you have any comments, feel free to leave your questions in the description below or in the, sorry, in the comment box below.